Good evening. It's good to uh, see you and welcome you to this time of worship on Saturday night uh, for our Saturday Night Alive. We also uh, want to welcome those who uh, join us uh, during this time of worship through our live Facebook stream or who will be joining us later this week uh, in the recorded uh, messages that are put out either on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. It's so good to come together this evening. I uh, just want to share uh, real quickly this evening that uh, tomorrow's 8.30 a.m. radio broadcast is in memory of Keith Hadfield, uh, given by Lynette Hadfield, and the altar flowers are in honor of Jan Reynolds, uh, offered by Don Stefani. And as many of you know, this week uh, Jan retired as the church administrator, and so we want to continue to remember her as our friend and uh, uh, for all that she's done the past 28 years of the church. Uh, also, please remember coming up to uh, the drive-up dinners this week with the menu being uh, ham in scallop potatoes, green beans, and cookies. And we ask that you please make your reservations before noon on Wednesday. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and or pre-Thanksgiving weekend, and so this weekend we are celebrating Christ the King, and uh, this is the last uh, weekend uh, for worship of the uh, Christian year, of the calendar year, and next year it's Happy New Year's as we begin Advent. And so there's a lot of things in the works and in the plans for coming up in the Advent and Christmas season, and we look forward to sharing that time with you as uh, we focus on starting anew. And so tonight, as uh, we begin to worship, that's just come into the house, that's come offering praise and thanksgiving before the Lord as Adam leads us into this time of worship this evening. and thanks
blossom and mourn all from the morn fields. Blossom and mourn All right. Thank you very much. I would invite you to please rise, and you're welcome to join in the call to worship tonight. Let us be called to worship, to make a joyful noise to the Lord, to worship with a heart of gladness. In God's holy presence today, we sing, we give thanks, we pray, we prepare our hearts to love God as the people of God. May we proclaim and know God's steadfast love is present now and endures forever. Let's join in our opening uh, prayer also. Tender, comforting shepherd, your steadfast love is present in this place and resides within each of us. But sometimes it is hard, so very hard, to open ourselves to your love. We feel like scattered sheep, frightened and alone. Help us know your loving presence as we live as your gathered community. Enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which we have been called. Amen. Now let's join together in our opening hymn, We Gather Together. May be seated. As uh, we come to a time of offering, Pam's going to come forward and uh, share with us about the reacts and anything that we need to know for this coming week. And uh, thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Good evening. So we had this week a deposit of $3,307.85 totaling $94,815.79. So we're almost to that 100,000 mark. Almost. <laughs> we'll get there soon. Um, we had a new business um, donation and that puts us at 2,100 for the businesses. 
Just a reminder, pick up for the pies and pumpkin rolls is Wednesday along with the pick up for the dinner. Uh, don't forget to come for Thankfest tomorrow. Um, the coffee and the salad dressings will be displayed there, some available for purchase. Um, and so just keep your ears open for new things that we have going on. Thanks. So as we uh, take an opportunity this evening to reflect in our offering and in our giving, uh, may you just uh, take time to uh, enjoy this song that we'll be singing and uh, hear from God, hear from the move of the Holy Spirit uh, speaking to you this evening as we receive this evening's offering. Dear Lord, we pray a blessing upon these gifts and tithes and offerings, and also, Lord, for that which we offer to you through our talents, through our service. We pray tonight, Lord, for a moving in our hearts, within our church, within this community, so that all will hear the good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Isaiah, uh, 40th chapter and the third verse, would invite you to please rise as uh, we stand on God's Word tonight to uh, share in God's Holy Word. Let's read together. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, and you may be seated. Dear Lord, I pray tonight that the words that come from my mouth and the meditation that rises from my heart will be pleasing and acceptable to you. And I pray today, Lord, that it is your words that I share, that the me and me is removed and only the you and me would speak tonight. I pray tonight, Lord, in, in this place that we'll hear what you have to say to us and that 
our ears, our hearts, our minds, our souls will be open and ready to receive. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So I, I want to just start off tonight by saying, uh, for some of you that have, you know, been following along every week, which is most of you, you're probably sitting there saying to yourself, <clears throat> I think he just did this sermon a couple of weeks ago. I think he just used this scripture uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I did. Uh, on All Saints Weekend. And uh, I, I just have to say that in that time period from the first weekend in November to the last weekend in November, I felt an uneasiness because uh, in, in my quiet time and in my meditation time, I really felt the Holy Spirit speaking, you really didn't say what I wanted you to say. Um, you really didn't share uh, what I was hoping you would share. And so as I planned out the scriptures, uh, I began to just continue to come back to this Isaiah 43, and in particular to the 40th chapter of um, Isaiah. So the, the 40th chapter of Isaiah is sort of a turning point. Up until up into this point uh, in, in the history of Isaiah and in his writings, it was basically a call for the people to get their act together. That uh, God was not going to remain patient very much longer. And so, when you get to the 40th chapter of Isaiah, th there becomes this extreme shift. And instead of um, Isaiah saying, you're going to hell most of the time, um, and I paraphrase that, I'm sure Isaiah didn't say, you're going to hell, but we hear a lot of people today look and, and judge other people and say, they're going to hell, there's no hope for them. Isaiah makes a shift, and I think it's a shift that we need to make also. And the shift that Isaiah makes through uh, chapter 40, 40 through, I think it's 55, is one of hope, and, and one of redemption, and one of God is not done with you yet. Regardless of what is happening in, in bringing uh, Jerusalem and uh, Uh, the upper and the northern parts of Jerusalem, I forgot the name there, actually, I'm stalling, uh, back together into one unified group of, of believers and a group, a country, it, it very much changes in the message that God has done so much for you and has guided you in so many ways. Now it's time for you to do something for yourself. And not just for yourself, but for the other people, for your families, for your friends. And so in the third verse of this 40th chapter, he comes off with these words that we just prepared and read tonight. And those words were simply, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. I know that many of us think we live in a wilderness, not just physically, which we do. Uh, the front end of Gail's car will attest to how we are experiencing living in the wilderness when we meet up with deer along the road. But how spiritually, so many times, how in our life, we live in this spiritual wilderness where we have fear and where we have much apprehension and, and we don't know which way to go. 
And then out of somewhere, the voice of God speaks to us, either through a prophet or uh, through the written word, uh, through the, the urging of the Holy Spirit that says to us, your spiritual destiny now rests in your hands. I've done it for you. I've provided you always with a way. I've given you care. I've given you Jesus to be a ransom. And now you have to do something with us. And I think that in this 40th chapter in particular, there are some really clear ways that the prophet speaks and tells us what we need to do. One of those ways is that I really believe that in, in removing these obstacles in our spiritual life, we have prescribed so often to hear about everything that is wrong. You know, we're consumed by the COVID virus. We're consumed by the election. We're consumed by everything else that's going on around us. That we get our hearts and our minds so centered on that, that they become an obstacle in our path. And as you well know, when we have a clear pathway, it is much easier to walk than when there are all these obstacles that are keeping us from tripping up and seeing even the power and the presence of God working in our life. And so one of the things that I really believe that we have to do today, for us today, is I think that we need to quit living in gloom and doom and start believing that restoration is on the way. Do you believe tonight that restoration is on the way? So we are basing so much in this COVID that there's a vaccine on the way, and that's going to make everything better. But we already have a vaccine against evil, and it's called being filled with the Holy Spirit, being filled uh, with the, the presence of God. And by trusting in God and believing in God's provisions, I really believe that restoration is on the way. And personally, I don't want to plan in how I'm going to get through the COVID. I'm just going to listen and, and try to get through it the best I can. But I want to plan in how I'm going to make my life better spiritually and the ones that I love, that we can be happier, that we can rest more in the presence of God working in our life, in the Holy Spirit, than we can worrying about doom and gloom and death and pain and misery. And that comes by placing our complete trust in Jesus Christ. In, in Isaiah 43, God directs um, Isaiah to speak tenderly and to comfort. And I think for us today, it's really, really important for us to preach the hope of heaven. Do we have hope in heaven? Do, are we living in what we think is the best? I certainly hope not. Whether it is here on earth or in heaven, in eternity, I certainly hope we're not thinking we're living in the best because I really believe through God's written word, spoken word, that there's something better for us. And we just have to be willing to accept it and to receive it. And for us, I think we have to preach the hope of heaven, the joy of knowing Jesus as Savior. And that one of the things 
in death is understanding that there is resurrection. So when we allow some things to die, and I'm not just talking about our, our human bodies, but when we allow some things to die, something better is going to be resurrected as long as we're placing that trust in Jesus. So I guess I would say we can't remain stuck. But instead, we need to be embracing the love of Christ. We need to be embracing the love of God's care in our life. And more importantly, then, we need to be sharing that for all the world. When we talk about, you know, removing these obstacles, this is something that John the Baptist talked about also in Matthew 3, because he almost repeats word for word the, the words of the prophet Isaiah. And he talks about removing these obstacles. And so, um, I guess I want to ask you tonight, what needs to be removed in your life? What obstacle needs to be removed that's keeping you from that desirable relationship, the relationship that you're desiring to have with God? What needs to be removed? Isaiah speaks that, that every valley will be made high, every mountain will be made low. And, you know, that's significant today to realize that the place that God wants to guide us to doesn't have obstacles. So that's why we really got to lean in and we really got to feel the power and the presence of God working and calling and moving us. Because God's going to direct us into a path that is, is, is not going to have these obstacles that we keep running from or hiding from or tripping over. And I really think that, that this verse 10 of Isaiah uh, 40 becomes so very, very important because it says in here, the sovereign Lord comes. The Lord of peace, the Lord of hope, the Lord of everything, which is all combined in that word sovereign. The sovereign Lord comes. And it just doesn't say it's like your Uncle Ed showing up after being gone for 35 years, and then all of a sudden he reappears. It's more like the sovereign Lord doesn't just come with a visit because the prophet goes on to say that the sovereign Lord comes with power. So have you allowed God to come into your life full of power? Because God has a whole bunch of power to, to share with you if you're willing to receive it. And it says he brings a mighty arm, a strong arm to rule. And that the reward will be with the Lord. The reward isn't going to be in all this stuff we're spending all of our time talking about and being confused about and fretting over. It's going to come, it's going to come, the reward is going to come from, from God in trusting Him, in, in making a way for Christ to King to enter into our lives, in, in making a way to express thanksgiving and having a thankful heart for all that we have and all that we are and all that we've lived through and all that we've been able to do. It comes in, in praying and meaning the prayer, fall afresh on me, remold me, remake me according to to your will, not in the will of, of anything else, but being remade and remold in the will of God. So I've shared tonight how I've been hearing the Lord speak to me. How have you been hearing the Lord speak to you? What have you been seeing as witness and proof 
of what God is doing and wants to do in your life. And as Adam comes to sing the next song, um, maybe you can just take a, a few moments while we're singing and think to yourself, how's the Lord speaking to me? What am I hearing? What am I feeling? And let, let the Holy Spirit work during this time. Thank you, Adam. So, as I was preparing for this message and as I'm doing my devotions every morning, and, you know, I've, I've really been praying, um, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. And I opened up my Bible that I have. At home. I have Bibles all over the place. I mean, because I, I just read randomly, you know, and they're different versions, and I love the words that they say. So, um, I opened up my Bible, and at some point, I had written in the um, side of the Bible, uh, on Acts 11, I believe it is, these three words, revelation, invitation, and confirmation. And I looked at those words, and I thought, I don't know why I wrote these words down. I don't know when I wrote these words down. And I read through that chapter, and I thought, I don't know why I would have wrote these words down in this place. Until I started thinking about this call that, that we have, you know, to make the way straight for others to come to the Lord, I, I started to feel this speaking about these three words about this revelation. And the revelation is not the revelation that we talk about in the end of the Bible, you know, about the world coming to the end and the monster showing up and everything. But more importantly, I think about the, the revelation that we need to have about the presence of God working in our life. How, how God is going to be revealed in, in our life so that in that revelation, we become the people. I become the person. I become the person who is still seeing God move and do things. And still celebrating the advent that, that we're getting ready to move into. Of the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Born in a humble little cow feeding trough. 
who's bringing salvation to the world. So how can I, with as much as I have, ever shirk from the responsibility that God has called me to, to share the hope and the peace and the joy? I need that to be revealed anew in my life. Um, and you'll excuse me for saying, I think all of us need the same revelation. Secondly, the invitation. The invitation. We have all been invited. We have all been invited to accept all that God wants to give. And that is life and life abundantly. And at the top of the page, I think it's like the 32nd or 33rd verse of Acts 11, it says, there is no exception. There is no exception. All, all are the same in God's eyes. All are able to receive. So how could I hesitate for one moment who I should be sharing this invocation, invitation to come to Jesus, to know Jesus as your personal Savior? I'm not called to be the qualifier in that. I'm called to share that with all the world. And the third thing is the confirmation. The confirmation of our commitment that we need to make. The reminder of the commitment that we have already made through our profession of faith, through living faithfully from this day forward, leaving the pains and the problems and the situations of the past behind and living faithfully into the present and into what God wants to do with us in the future. So how do we make the way straight for us in the wilderness? We remove that which is toxic um, from our lives. Um, and I'm not saying that we live a life that we're walking on clouds and bathing in the sunshine all the time. Because there's going to be darkness. We're going to have to deal with that. But my goodness, we got to move into the place where we're recognizing the presence and the power of God working in our lives and through our lives all of the time. And that n we have nothing to prove but Jesus. And how Jesus lives in our life. That we have nothing to hide in our faith. But that we are openly sharing our belief in what we believe that God can do. And certainly, we have nothing to lose. You know, we, we say it at, all the time. We come into this world with nothing. I mean, you know, we really do. We come into this world with nothing. And we're going out with the same. Maybe other than if they dress us and put us in a casket. We're going out with the same. But it's so important that we take everything that we have while we're here and make that dash between the day we were born and the day we die, the most important part of our life for God. So that we never have a doubt, so that we never have a question, so that we never have a reservation, so that we have that revelation that God is love and God loves us, that we have accepted the invitation to be the best that we can be in the name of Jesus through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And we are constantly confirming to ourselves, to others, that we believe in the power and the presence of what God wants to do. In the wilderness you live in, 
make straight the way of the Lord. Watch out for those obstacles. But make a highway for God to work in your life and work in the lives of others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, uh, in, in this moment in time, uh, whatever it is that's surrounded us, is bothering us, is, is withdrawing us into another place, may it be stopped. Will you come through with that heavenly backhoe and remove all of those obstacles that are in our way? so that we're not tripped up in the things of life. We're not tripped up in the situations of life. That our hearts and our minds and our everything is focused on you. And Lord, for the doubter out there tonight, I pray for them that you speak to them extra hard so we can all proclaim that we are winners, that we are victorious, and that you've got this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let's take an opportunity to share in our praises tonight, uh, how we felt God moving. Who has a praise that uh, they can share tonight? Anybody? Thanks, Mike, for sharing that. Amen. Thank you. Those of you who didn't hear, Mike said, God's been working in his life every day. Thank you very much. As we turn to prayer concerns, we want to remind you of the prayer concerns that uh, we have this evening, uh, either on our whiteboard or on our prayer concern sheet. Uh, we want to uh, uh, share with you that Jeff uh, did have his surgery uh, this week, and um, he is home, and continue to remember Jeff uh, in uh, your prayers for healing from his back surgery. Uh, we also want to pray for those that have this week been affected by this COVID and for new persons that have tested positive and for many things that have had to take place uh, because of that, we continue to pray and trust 
and know that God's going to make a way through this. And um, that, that's just trust, keep trusting in that. Uh, other prayer concerns that we can share tonight. Okay, let's join together in a word of prayer tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for the, the time that we have to come together and to uh, worship you. Thank you for all that you're doing in the midst of so much. Most of all, Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you constantly make a way and uh, that there's no place that we can be right now that we're so far from you that we can't come back. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit working and moving in our lives. Tonight, Lord, as we come here, we know that there are many who are hurting. There have been new test results with this COVID uh, stuff. And Lord, we're just going to pray for a rapid healing for those that have been affected. We pray, Lord, for your uh, movement into the situation and for all the obstacles that are keeping us from going away or being treated. And we pray. We pray for those that are in hospitals and nursing homes and care centers, for those who are confined uh, in their own homes, Lord, whatever the situation might be for heart or for cancer or for skeletal problems or muscular problems. Lord, we just pray an outpouring of your healing power in their lives. This evening, Lord, as we come before you, we pray for Jeff. We ask, Lord, that you'll just continue to, to heal him and, and bring healing uh, to his life, continue to renew and strengthen him, be with Tony as she cares for him, and just uh, bring peace into their house and into their home uh, right now during this time. Lord, this country just continues to be in turmoil, and we know it's not your way. We know division is not of you. We know that partisanship is not of you. And so we pray, Lord, for a move of God like maybe we've never recognized before to bring peace and to bring hope and to bring stability in so many ways and into so many places, Lord. May you have a hand in it all, and may all those who have been elected to offices trust in you and, and place their confidence in your will and in how your spirit speaks to them and guides them and directs them. Lord, we're, we're thankful for our schools, and we know that, that many schools are under many new situations and circumstances this week. And so we pray, we pray, Lord, for safety. We pray that they are a place of wholeness and wellness. We pray for administrators and teachers and especially for the students from the preschools clear through to the college age students. Lord, we just pray tonight for our schools. We thank you, Lord, that we are thankful people and tonight, as thankful people, we thank those who serve, for our men and women in the military, for our policemen, our firemen, our emergency personnel. We'd be in a tough spot without them. And we just pray, Lord, that you continue to give them strength and hope. Lord, we can all in this room tonight proclaim how blessed we are and how much we have. But we know that there are many who are struggling we know that there are many who have no shelter. There are many who are cold. There are many who have no place to lay their heads tonight. There are those who are hungry. There are those that are lacking uh, clean drinking water. And so we pray. We pray for them, Lord. We pray for those that have been affected by this drug epidemic and for the families that have lost loved ones this past week. And we just pray that, that you surround them. Lord, in your mercy, speak words of hope to us, words of love, words of peace, words of joy, so that we can indeed be walking through this wilderness that we call life, 
unafraid and unashamed to be the people that you call us each to be. And so we pray tonight, Lord, a prayer that you said when you pray, pray like this. We bring it before you tonight as an offering. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing our closing hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Before you leave uh, tonight, just give us a couple minutes. Maybe, Dawn, you can go and grab devotional books um, that's up on the uh, mantel up there. Uh, Advent starts next weekend, uh, next Sunday, actually. We have an Advent devotional for you, uh, which is from some of the writings of that great theologian, Henry Nouwen. And um, we will be highlighting those scriptures each and every day of Advent. So um, as we go through Advent, uh, what it says on for that Sunday, that scripture for that Sunday, is going to be the sermon I'm going to be preaching using that scripture as a guide. So that's going to be our guide, hopefully through Advent. Hope to reach out to some of you and say, you know, what are you thinking about this? Uh, what what God say to you today? Uh, you know, it's, it's just my hope that, that we come to a place in this season of uh, Advent as we come towards Christmas that we are renewed and remade in, in every way possible. So go from this place, um, not just as like church people, you know, um, you know, not with the attitude, well, I got that off my list for this week, you know. But that you go from this place renewed. And that you take maybe one word, one song, uh, maybe a word and a prayer. That you let that uh, penetrate into your hearts. So that you know that you're loved by God. And that God wants the very best for you. And that you've been wonderfully created. And don't allow anyone to take that from that, from you. Don't let anyone steal your joy. Because you are going victorious from this place tonight. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, 
and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of Christ that beats anything else remain in your hearts. Amen.